Well, I'm going to put a new throttle cable on here. It's a twist lock type, similar to the original. This one's made or sold by Stens. I think I had to get the nut separately. The hole in the dash has a flat on it, so the throttle only goes in one way. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten this. I need the end of this to come in at the right angle. And I need everything else to not be a tight bend. If I leave enough cable to make a sweeping bend on this side, kind of hangs out there. Maybe the belt guard will hold it in. I'm going to try going around the other way. I like that better. This tractor don't have a battery to worry about, so I don't mind the cable crossing there behind the engine. I think I'll put it this way. I'm going to cut it with these big fence pliers. I like to leave them long at first because you can cut it again later if you have to but if you cut it too short you're done so that's where I want to cut it at there I'm gonna hold this outer jacket in the pliers and you gotta make sure you take the center cable out first it gets cut later. This outer cable is pretty floppy without the center wire in it. That's why you want to establish your routing with the wire inside. Now this cable has to attach to this upper arm and I need to use this old bent up cable clamp to do it. This upper arm seems to be bent a little bit too far forward and I want to bend the top of it so it's vertical because that's the angle the cable is going to come in from.
this arm comes off if you loosen the brass bushing. I'm going to go bend it in the vise. This time I'm going to rotate it to the left a little bit so I have more room for the cable to travel. I'm looking at where I want to cut this. I want to leave some room to put the Z bend in the end. And I'm also looking at where the outside of the cable is going to be held by the clamp. When you start the Z bend, Put the first bend pointing towards the engine so you don't have to twist the cable to get it in the hole. I do the outside of the Z bend last. And then I always have to correct the first bend a little bit which is why you need some beefy needle nose pliers yeah I don't like the way I bent that mounting arm so I'm gonna bend it back towards the way it was but I do need the top pointed straight up that needs to hold the cable so it's not on a bind I'm going to loosen the brass nut and rotate the arm back some more. Here you need to make sure the throttle cable is pushed all the way in. Pull it up first to get a feel for how it moves the throttle arm on the carburetor. And then slowly push it down until the throttle arm just gets to the idle position. And that's where I want to tighten it. With the throttle knob pushed all the way in, the carburetor arm should be at the idle position when the throttle is pulled halfway out the carburetor arm should be at the full open position and when you pull it the rest of the way out you're just adding more force to that governor spring something feels odd about that there's usually a little bit more free play but I don't see anything wrong so I'm gonna keep going and see if it works
I'm gonna adjust the governor arm next. So what we're doing here is setting the timing between this carburetor arm and what's on the other end of that governor shaft inside. Basically they need to be synchronized in the full open position. Now with the clamp screw loose, I'm going to grip this shaft with the pliers and rotate it to the full throttle position, which is counterclockwise. And then I'm going to push down on this wrench with my finger, which moves the carburetor arm to the full throttle position. And then I tighten them together. If you think about it, the governor is controlling the full throttle position. So that's what's important. I'm putting the carburetor in the full throttle position and I'm putting the internal governor mechanism at the full throttle position. And then they get clamped together. Now I want to make sure that when I push the throttle cable all the way in that the carburetor arm gets all the way to the idle position. Up here you can see I may have cut the outer jacket too long because at the full throttle position it's almost bottomed out against the outside jacket. Might have to fix that later. Well, let's see if it'll start. Everything's cold, so I'm going to put the choke on all the way. I push the throttle cable all the way in to the idle position, and then slowly open the throttle until the carburetor arm just gets to the wide open position. That's usually about half throttle. I want to make sure there's fuel in the carburetor so I don't have to crank it a lot to pump the fuel up there. Well, I'm going to pressurize the fuel tank. When I do that, I can hear the fuel going in the carburetor. And I can hear when the float closes the needle valve. So the fuel may have drained out of the carburetor since the last time I did that. I don't see any leaks. Before it's running, that throttle is wide open. And that lets the air suck through there. And with the choke closed, that's when it pulls up some extra fuel for starting. Once it starts, the governor takes over and pushes the carburetor arm back towards the idle position. When it first gets started, I have to keep the choke nearly closed to keep it running. So that tells me it's not getting enough fuel. And that's when I start opening the needle valves. The main jet on top has the most effect. And as I turn it out to let more fuel in, it starts to run better without the choke on. There's a little more tapping noise than I like to hear, so I shut it down to regroup. I just checked the oil off camera and that looks good. I'm going to turn the idle speed screw in a little bit. 
It just helps keep it running while I'm messing with it. I want to know how far these screws are out. So I'm going to count the turns as I turn them in. And then bring them back out to the same place. And I'll try to start it again. Here the governor is revving that up and down. The mixture's not right. So as it slows down, the governor tries to give it more throttle. And as soon as it recovers, it gains speed too fast and the governor slows it down again. So as I richen out the mixture here, it stabilizes. That looks pretty good. When I yank the throttle out all the way, it gains speed until the governor slows it back down. Well, something don't sound right. The last few times I revved it up, it revved up higher and didn't come back down quickly. Gotta shut it down and think about it a second. Yeah, that don't feel normal. See, it wants to return back to the same position. Normally, when the engine's not running, you can move that around some and it won't spring back. So I'm going to take it apart and see what I find. This shaft doesn't turn as free as I would like. After I loosen the brass nut, it's a little bit freer. Seems like there's plenty of in play there. When you tighten the brass nut, it gets tighter again. Could be an alignment issue. It feels like the bushing back in the block is okay. If I pull this out to the right position, I can rotate it about 90 degrees clockwise. So that's not good. That paddle in there should be facing downward. That's where the little button is it's supposed to be pushing on. So I think that was in there wrong. Hope it didn't mess something up. I'm going to put it together and see if it works. Well, 
Well, the brass bushing is tight and the shaft is free. So that was definitely an issue there. So now I'm going to adjust the governor position again. That feels better there. There's a little area where it doesn't spring back to the same position. Okay, let's try it again. I have to choke it to keep it running and opening the screws more don't seem to help so I don't think it's getting enough gas I'll bet that fuel pump diaphragm's too thick so to test that theory I'm gonna pressurize the fuel tank again I'm going to close these screws and count the turns, put them back where they started. Well, look at that. That kind of proves the fuel pump don't work. Yeah, that's not good there. The thing over revved right away. I want to make sure this arm has a good grip on the shaft. So I'm going to see if it'll move. Well, that all seems okay. I marked off a little square with masking tape and spray painted it so you can see a straight line through the shaft there. And I'm going to readjust the governor shaft and see if it moves. Well, that moved quite a bit. So either something's changing on the inside, or I did it wrong last time. Not much clearance behind this arm now. I must have moved it. So I gotta redo that and move this out a little.
Okay, here we go again. Make sure the gas is turned on. Give it some choke. And throttle up to just barely full throttle. Alright, don't forget the fuel pump don't work. So I'm going to pressurize the system again. Well, that seems like it wants to over rev again. So I think there's something wrong inside. All I can say about that is, uh, let's take it apart and see what happened. Alright, that's it.